Hello everyone and welcome to my 100th video. Yes, 100 videos. Um, I can't actually believe that I've got to this point <laughs> where this is this is it. This is the hundredth video. I just that just blows me away that I've that I've done that many. And I've just got to interrupt here. That is my that's classic me in a vehicle on Halo. I just had to interrupt there. I could have edited this footage out to make myself look really good, but where would the fun in that be? That's me all over yeah this is the uh, this is my hundredth video and I'm playing Halo Anniversary um, Firefight um, which is kind of like a horde mode um, well yeah it's, it's kind of like a horde mode really for Halo it's really good I really enjoy playing it um, it's uh, it's very challenging shall we say, but it's very rewarding as well. Um, I love the Halo games. I selected this for my 100th video because Halo nowadays tends to to split people. You either love it or you hate it. Um, but when it came out on the Xbox, the original Xbox, it was at that point where it was like, right, okay, a really top class first person shooter that looks great and plays great is possible on a console now I know there were other first person shooters before that like time splitters and so on but I think that Halo was the first one in my opinion that was as near as damn it to a first per PC based first person shooter. Stuff like Time Splitters had clearly been designed purely for a console in mind. But Halo came over really as a game that not only would it look look and play great on a console, but it would on a PC as well. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there will disagree with that and I and that's fine. I mean, this is that's just my own personal opinion. I played video games, especially first-person shooters, almost exclusively on the PC. Um, I sort of dallied with the PlayStation One, with Doom and and Hexen and Duke Nukem, but I they were great. They were really good. But I always went back to the PC as being the definitive version of those games. You know, if you wanted to play the definitive version of them, you played them on the PC. It was that simple. And uh, Halo was the first game that I played that I thought, you know what, I don't particularly need or want to root out the, the PC version. So, in a roundabout way, I'm guessing that's why I chose it. Um, to be the uh, footage for my 100th show. Oh, and by the way, if you hear any kind of weird background noises while I'm recording this video, it's absolutely blowing a gale outside. And where I record my footage is kind of in the spare room upstairs at the corner of the house, so you might hear some weird metal clanging and stuff like that. I don't know, it's just the house falling apart around me. See, the, the, the things I go through for you guys, you know, just to get these videos out there. <laughs> um, yeah, so, as I was saying, that was the reason why I chose it. And it, there'll be people that disagree with me, there, there's probably people that can pull out a whole range of games that are better examples, but it's just a, it was very much a personal thing. And so when you're making these type of videos, we're clear. You have to, you know, I'm going at it from a personal angle, and that sort of segues really into me sort of going on about the intentions that I have with this channel. Um, this isn't this isn't a channel that hasn't been set up in any way, shape, or form to be representative of a professional opinion on 
anything. This is a personal channel that I set up, just me playing games, yakking on about them, and just really presenting them in a manner that you would have if you were sat down having a conversation. If somebody came up to me and said, what do you think of this game? Then that's exactly my take on it. And if if anyone sort of like want, you know, it, I'm never going to go down the path. And style is what it is, and I'm not going to change it. It's I make the videos just as if I was sat in the room with you and I was chatting about it. That's my intention. There are plenty of channels out there that do professional reviews that are tied to um, corporate review websites. And I didn't particularly want to, to try and emulate those whatsoever. I didn't want to do a comedy channel because there are people who are a lot funnier than I am and do it a lot better than I could. And so this was really from the point of view of just doing it. Hey, I'm a video gamer just like you guys. I'm not getting paid for it. This is what I think. My opinions might be factually wrong. Um, and, you know, fine. Honestly, I don't really care. It, it's when I'm playing the game, it's essentially how I feel playing the game. If I'm playing the game wrong, then I'm playing the game wrong. But I'm playing the game. And if there is a wrong way of playing the game, then that's and I, that's what I'm doing, then that's fine. But that's how I was playing the game. And I'd be pretty certain to think that there would be other people who play the game the same way. And that's pretty much where I'm coming from with it, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to get everything factually right in the videos that I make, I'm not trying to, you know, win any type of awards or anything like that, I'm just trying to offer some sort of an alternative place for people to watch some game footage, listen to some idiot rambling on about the game and Overkill. things in general to do with the game industry and that's pretty much it you know I've done a lot of retro games recently um, I'm going to continue to do as many retro games as I can um, obviously at some point I'm going to be limited by access to retro games um, which is why of late I'm starting to try and mix it up again more because in the past couple of months I've invested quite heavily in Double terms kill. of getting um, old Mega Drive games and what have you um, and I've got quite a catalogue of them and um, probably a lot more than I ever intended to and I'm now sort of got, I've got to that place now where I'm like, right, okay, I've got quite a lot of these and I'm pretty much done in terms of collecting them. I mean, don't worry, I've got material for videos galore for the Mega Drive, and but I'm not just going to go out and buy every single Mega Drive game that I see at a reasonable price. I'm actually only really interested in going out and buying the ones that I want. So I'm pretty much going to treat the retro gaming as I would treat doing reviews for modern gaming. As in, you know, you, I wouldn't go out and buy every single modern video game, contrary to, to what some people would have you believe. I don't do that. I buy the ones that I want, and that's pretty much how I'm going to go down the route with the... Um, and that's pretty much how I'm going to go down the route with the retro games because I was just essentially hammering them to the usual places and finding games, some of which I didn't even, I never even played before, I didn't even know about them. Um, and there were nerfed some gems as well. I mean, there'd be some videos coming up that I'll be doing where I've got sold of some Mega Drive games I didn't even know existed because by that time I'd already moved on console wise. I think at that point I'd had sort of embraced the PC and had gone away from the the console market and I'd missed some fantastic Mega Drive games it has to be said they, they were 
technically amazing um, and really proved that what the Mega Drive could do even in its unexpanded state separate from the 32X. I haven't got a 32X, I did have one but I haven't got one anymore and I'm not going down that route again. Um, I got stung with the 32X the first time now. I wasn't that impressed with it to be perfectly honest with you, um, even when I had it. Again, it had some good games but I think for the most part it was a pretty awful add-on. It wasn't supported properly. Um, it was supposed to be 32-bit, but compared to other 32-bit machines out there at the time, it was woefully underpowered. Um, and it was very expensive as well. It was an expensive add-on to get to. Um, I don't know whether you can see this or not, but I tried to the best of my ability to make my Halo Spartan avatar fella in the game look as close to a Star Wars clone trooper slash stormtrooper as possible. I think they look pretty close to a hybrid um, of the two. Uh, I do like the fact that you can customise your armour in Halo and customise its colour scheme as well to make it quite a personal personal looking thing. It's, it's very good when you're playing um, game modes like this. Um, with other people as well, and you can see what, uh, what armor they've customized to. Normally, my customizations <laughs> turn into something of a horror show, but I actually put some half assed effort into this. Normally, I mean, it's a mismatch of colors that just look ridiculous, but I put a bit of effort into trying to make, you know, uh, a stormtrooper slash clone trooper hybrid. Um, I think I managed to play off pretty well, although you don't really get to see it properly when I play in this game, aside from times when I die quite frequently. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? I haven't got a clue. That's just uh, that's typical of me that I've completely lost thread of what I was saying. But yeah, never. Mind. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking about the, the my style of reviewing and, and uh, retro games and stuff like that. I have got some NES games as well um, that I'm going to review, and I got those via um, the Nintendo Wii's um, Virtual Arcade, which was a fantastic idea because the, one of the main considerations I have is space, as in I don't have a great deal of space. Um, you know, I have a limited amount of area in this house that is like designated for doing gaming and my gaming hobby and because I own the PS3, I own the Wii, I own the Xbox 360, I own a 3DS, a PSP and probably will own a Vita soon. That'll be at the expense of the PSP. Um, and plus the fact I have um, the Blaze Mega Drive and the Mega Drive games and PlayStation 1 games, you suddenly find that space becomes a premium. So things like the Virtual Arcade are real blessings in disguise because you can just download the games and they are as good as damn it as the original NES games, even down to the, the bugs that was in the games as well. I, mean, I, think, I think it's, I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing that Nintendo just release them, just re-release them in the same state that they were in. Um, if you want faithful to the original, that's great, but it's really annoying when you've got games that have got bugs in that have been in there for 25 years and they've never bothered to do anything about it, and essentially it's like they just ripped the game in some sort of downloader thing and just uploaded it to their site without uh, to their arcade, sorry, which I'm even bothering to check. Um, I'm going to put a review up um, for, the, for Double Dragon on the NES that has a really incredible bug in it, whereby no matter how many lives you have, um, you get to a certain point in the game, and the minute you die, it's game over. And it, it doesn't seem to matter that you might have, you know, five or six lives left. Um, 
it's just game over and that's your lot and off you go. Um, that is annoying, that is a very annoying book and uh, yeah, I'll be doing that. I came across um, an interesting little bug actually with, um, not a bug, uh, a problem with recording that footage. Um, it defaults on my Wii when I select the, to play the old games to 576i. Now the video capture card, well I've got two, and the one that I've been using and the one that I'm using here has been the Roxio video capture card. It will not pick up, it will pick up right to the point where it gets to the main menu of the game and then that's it, it just freezes and locks up, which means that I'm going to have to record that on um, my Elgato video capture card because that doesn't really seem to care what what goes on it, that, that capture card just downgrades everything <laughs> to um, its own picture picture quality which tends to vary quite dramatically um, don't get me wrong it's it's a good enough capture card but it doesn't do as good an image quality um, it doesn't do with the image quality as good as um, the Roxio. I'm really struggling here with the Roxio, and that's not brilliant either. But as I've said before in a previous um, video that I did last week, um, I have weird problems with the audio on the Roxio, and I was really hoping that the service pack they'd released would cure that problem, um, but it hasn't. And I spent all yesterday recording video footage because the first video that I tested it seemed to be fine and I thought marvellous they fixed it so off I went um, I recorded 14 videos yesterday um, after spending ages faffing around and realising that I couldn't record um, old well old uh, NES games using it on the Wii and while I was rendering them last night, I thought, well, I'll, I'll just have a look at this one, see what this one looks like. And what would you know? After I spent all day doing that and had rendered probably about six or seven of them already, um, the audio problem was back. Now, it's not a problem with the rendering process because the rest of it, um, I have, sorry, I hadn't actually rendered that video. It was still in its raw footage and to give you an example of what it is one minute the sound goes like you're listening to Barry White and the next minute the sound goes like it's Alvin and the Chipmunks it's almost as if there's a lag in the sound and it, it and it then speeds up to try to resync the sound now that is a software issue as far as I'm concerned because my the, the PC based laptop that I'm using sorry the Windows based laptop that I'm using more easily more than exceeds the minimum requirements or even the recommended requirements for a capture device you know it's quite a powerful laptop it's not as powerful as the MacBook Pro uh, but it still is quite a powerful laptop the annoying thing is is that Roxio just won't do drivers for the Mac for this device, which I just think is ridiculous. Um, you know, they do support Mac in other products, but they, they're not supporting the Mac at all with this device, um, which, I'm, which I find quite annoying. Um, and anyway, they, they as, as you know from my previous video, they released this update, and I downloaded it, installed the update, and everything seemed to be fine. I tested one of the videos, uh, just like random clicking randomly on various parts of the video because obviously when you're recording raw footage you have an absolute stack load of um, you have a stack load of footage. I'm not gonna sit there for you know 45 minutes an hour listening for it. Again, that's probably my fault, but hey, that's just the way that I roll. Um and it seemed fine, and yet, <laughs> and yet, I, it, obviously the problem's there. I checked a couple of videos last night, 
about 11 o'clock last night while I was still in the process of rendering and they they, they were doing the Alvin and the Chipmunks um, Barry White impression again and it's so frustrating because this could be a really good capture card it, I think it produces good looking images and it's a relatively cheap capture card as well it's something like £70 um, 60 70 pounds to buy that, that's pretty good for a capture card um, and it's just so so frustrating and I, I, I don't know why it does this there are issues with it on the Roxio forum but the answers that they keep coming up they just po post a link to this like try this and whenever and anything like comes up like that, try this, try that. In general, it means that they haven't got a sudden clue um, how to fix the problem. And it was it's very much the case here. I just think that they don't have a clue how to fix the problem. The they did say they'd fixed audio issues with this service pack. What the audio issues are that they fixed I don't know it, it didn't kill. specify but it certainly wasn't fixing this bizarre bug or issue that there is and as I've said before you know one of the issues they they seem intent on getting people to try is to start altering things in the BIOS now no that simply doesn't work for me you should never have to alter anything in the BIOS to to do Double kill. anything like that, especially when it's to do with what they're suggesting is it's to do with the, from what I can make out, something to do with the temperature settings. I'm not messing about with anything like that in a, in a laptop. There's no way I'm running the risk of changing a setting which could potentially damage the laptop um, just to get the capture device working. That, that is pathetic. Um, they need to do something about it. They need to to get this sorted because it is a big problem, and it completely buggers up the capture card. I was so annoyed last night. I came within a whisker. If I had the money, I would have done it. But I came within a whisker um, of ordering um, one of those Halpage. HD PVR things for about £130 off Amazon. I came really close to doing that because I was just so angry and I was so frustrated that you know the problem was there again and spent all of this time um, recording all of this footage only for this bloody problem to still exist. Um, I wasn't a happy camper at all. But anyway, that's enough about that crap. Um, what other crap can I talk about? Double kill. I'm sure there's lots and lots and lots of crap I can talk about. Um, yeah, um, what I'm looking forward to, I suppose, like, rather than looking back with the retro stuff and what have you, I'm going to have a look forward to what's coming up video game wise and what I hope my sort of hopes for. Um, video games in the next year or two because there's no doubt that video games is entering, in my opinion it's entering into a really important point in its cycle and I think that the next generation of consoles are going to point the way to a, a lot of where gaming is going to end up essentially because this generation in my opinion has almost been quite transitional it's not been a generation where things have been perfected. It's been more of a generation where things are a working process, and that goes from the hardware to the firmware of the hardware, and then also to the software as well. We've seen some amazing and fantastic games, but we've also seen a large number of games that um, have not been but even though they've been amazing and fantastic, I've also had a lot of issues with them bug-wise. And I think the general consensus is people have started to get just a little bit fed up 
and I think that for the for the sake of the video games industry this next generation I think it's going to be very important that they start to get things right and I'll start first of all with the hardware because like everything else the hardware is what gets people's attention first and foremost in terms of when the new hardware comes out what can it do um, what's it like what's going to be the focus of it if you look back at the Wii when that came out the main focus was motion control which everybody else sort of picked up on late on in their console cycles with the 360 connect and the PlayStation 3 Mini. So, in terms of the hardware for the next generation, what is going to be important? Well, I think they've got to perfect the hardware. I think that there's no sense... Microsoft certainly can't have, can't have another Red Rings of Death scenario on their hand. In, incredible to me how they got away with it in the last generation, because it was a major disaster. <laughs> waiting to happen. I mean, that could have... If it, Sony been on the ball and had the PS3 out at the same time as the 360, you could have had a very different landscape in terms of gaming. Um, Sony could very well have uh, seen off Microsoft quite comfortably because the Red Rings of Death is an absolute cluster fuck. Uh, biblical proportions um, any console that launches with an inherent design flaw that the 360 had which essentially means that no matter which 360 you know if you own that original design of the 360 it is going to go red rings on you if it hasn't already it will okay it will because they didn't fix that issue with any degree of competency until they launched the 360S. You can disagree with that if you will, but I've known people that had brand new elites that were released months before the 360S. I've had people have had them fall over. The, the Halo console that was supposed to contain the new chipset they've fallen over with the red rings it is a design flaw with that with that console that's why the you know they, they are just an accident waiting to happen and it's incredible to me that that ever got to that stage so Sony had their problem with the yellow light of Doom as well and, and Blu-ray drive problems I mean my Blu-ray drive packed in on my um, launch PS3 which was really annoying because there was nothing else wrong with it and then it just started to have trouble reading discs and consequently I lost my backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 2 because I had to get the PS3 Slim as a replacement um, yeah the hardware manufacturers need to get their act together I don't want and this is me personally speaking I'm not representing all gamers out there, but I don't want to be dealing with hardware issues anymore. I'm fed up with it. So they need to get that sorted. Firmware wise, similar story. You stop taking things off people. And Mr. Sony, I'm looking at you in particular with that one. Don't have features on a console and then start taking them off it bit by bit to cut corners and cut costs. That just annoys the hell out of people and it damages your customer base relations. So that's important too, and stop releasing firmware that, that slows the console's performance down as well, Microsoft, um, because that annoys people too. If you're going to force something on somebody, at least make sure it works. Game-wise, I want to see innovation, I want to see games that work on day one, I don't want to see game-breaking bugs, I want them properly tested. I, you know, I want to want games delivered not by accountants, I want them delivered by developers. If a game has to go a few extra months in development to make it better, so be it. I'd rather have that than have a game that's broken on release day. 
Oh, that's probably wishful thinking as well. So, it's not a lot. I don't think he's asking a great deal. Although, he probably is asking a great deal when we sit down and break it down into his components. But, he's, the whole point of the next generation of consoles has to be it's better than what's out there. If it's not going to do things better than what it does already, there's no point in it. Okay, it's not just about the console's ability to do things, it's about realising that ability to do things and making sure it is better and making sure that it is an improvement on what's already with us. Don't release something broke and then try to fix it further down the line. People haven't got the patience for that anymore. So yeah, that's my hopes and aspirations for the coming generation and that pretty much brings us to the end of this 100th episode video. It's another long one. Thank you for sticking with me if you have done. And also thank you as well to all my subscribers and viewers for watching the videos currently and, and keeping me going doing this. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please stay tuned to my channel for more videos coming soon. Thanks.